हेलो गाइस आई वेलकम यू टू दिस वीडियो लेक्चर सीरीज ऑन सॉलिड स्टेट इलेक्ट्रॉनिक डिवाइसेस सो इन लास्ट फ्यू लेक्चर्स वी डिस्कस अबाउट डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ वी डिस्कस अबाउट व्हाट इज सेमीकंडक्टर मटेरियल देन वी डिस्कस अबाउट टाइप्स ऑफ सेमीकंडक्टर in types of semiconductor we talked about intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductor and then in extrinsic semiconductor we talked about n type and p type semiconductor material in n type semiconductor material we talked about what is the majority charge carriers for n type material so the electrons are majority charge carriers for n type material and holes are majority charge carriers for p type material we also discuss about minority charge carriers we said that okay holes are minority charge carrier for n type material and electrons are majority charge carrier for p type material then we discuss about pn junction diode we discuss the characteristic of this pn junction diode we said that okay the forward current is because of the majority charge carriers and the reverse current is because of the minority charge carrier the reverse current is also known as the leakage current then we discuss about some special types of semiconductor diodes in uh, from today's lecture onward we will be discussing about a more complex electronic uh, devices so basically what we are going to talk today we are going to talk about is bipolar junction transistor bjt generally this is referred as simply referred as transistor so let's talk about what is bjt as the name suggests bjt is a bipolar device what does bipolar mean it means that the current conduction is due to both electrons and holes so both electron as well as hole take part in the conduction of current you will understand uh, we will be discussing this in more detail this bjt is current driven device so basically the amount of current controls this particular device how uh, when we discuss about the working of this bjt that time it will be clear okay so what is this bjt so bjt is very simple bjt in bjt you create two pn junctions by sandwiching either p type material into two n type materials so something like this so at the center i have p type material which is sandwich between two n type material or you sandwich a n type material into p type materials something like this so basically there are three regions so this is first region this is second region and this is third region what the first region is known as emitter the, the middle region is known as base and the next region the remaining region is called as collector so in the construction of this particular thing uh, bjt p type semiconductor 
is sandwiched between two anti semiconductors or we can have a n type semiconductor sandwich between two p type semiconductors okay so if a p type material is sandwich between two n type semiconductor this is known as npn transistor or npn bgd and if n type is sandwich between two p type material this is known as pnp transistor now since there are three regions this is a three terminal device so from each region i am taking out some connections so basically for a transistor there are three terminals just like in case of diodes when we discuss about diodes we say that in a pn junction diode this is p type material this is n type material we have two terminals right so basically we denote it by something like this this is a diode so <coughs> this is cathode uh, uh, anode and cathode this is anode and this is cathode okay so there are two terminals over here we have three terminals so the properties of bgt is bgt is a current uh, current conduction is due to both electron as well as hole bgt is current driven device and bgt is three terminal device so when you sandwich a p type material into two n type material or you sandwich a n type material into two p type materials basically we are creating two pn junction just like over here we have created a pn junction we discuss this in more detail also over here if you look over here this is a p type material this is a n type material and in between we have created a pn junction similarly between this p type material and this n type material there is another pn junction so in bjt there are two junctions when i say junction it is two pn junction similarly even if i have pnp device look over here i have one pn junction formed over here and another pn junction formed over here so there are two pn junction so obviously there will be some depletion region created over here there will be some depletion region created over here and if i want to transfer electron from n type material to p type material i need to bias it at least i need to provide the voltage equal to new voltage right similarly in order to transfer electron from n type to p type or hole from p type to n type i need to bias this collector and emitter so there are depletion region form so the actual construction is something like this so as i have shown over here that all these three regions are equal in width it's not the case actually the width of these three regions are a little bit different so the emitter is moderate in size it's not very large it is moderate in size the base is thin in size and collector is larger in size so basically this is emitter this is base and this is collector look at the size of this particular thing so there will be three terminals coming out over here here and here it could be npn or pnp it doesn't matter so for the time being we are going to consider npn whatever we are going to discuss over here the same thing will be followed by pnp transistor as well so these are the three terminals 
so the width of emitter is moderate so if i am talking about width this is emitter base and collector the width of emitter is moderate width of base is small and width of collector is large if i am talking about the doping concentration then emitter is highly doped base is lightly doped and collector is moderately doped so basically what we are going to do using this transistor is that we are going to transfer charge carriers from emitter towards collector so since this emitter is providing the majority of charge carriers it need to be having a large concentration of charge carriers and in order to have a large concentration of charge carriers you need to have a high doping level that's why emitter is highly doped that's why emitter is highly doped right and as this base is just controlling the amount of charge carriers to be flown so we require a very small amount of charge carriers to be recombined in this base region maximum charge carriers need to be transferred to this collector and because of that this base is lightly doped because if there is lightly doped base for example i am talking about the npn transistor so this emitter is providing electrons toward the base and if base has a small number of holes in it then a small number of electrons will be recombining in base region and a large number of electron can be transferred into the collector region right so because of that we require lightly doped base and since the function of collector is just to collect the charge carriers the doping concentration actually does not matter so that's why it is moderately doped on for the width also since this emitter is just providing the electrons so it does not matter the uh, what is the size of this emitter it does not matter that's why it has a moderate size since the electron from emitter need to transfer to the collector the width of this base needs to be very very small so that's why the width of the base is very very small and similarly since the electrons are collected at the collector side so the collection of electron the ejection of electron into collector side will generate a large amount of heat and that heat need to be dissipated and because of that particular thing in order to dissipate a large amount of heat the size of collector need to be a large right so this is this is not a correct picture of a transistor or this is not a correct picture of a transistor this is the correct picture of transistor mm -hmm. you should show the sizes of emitter base and collector different right now <coughs> since the doping concentration of emitter base and collector it is different as we have discussed the emitter is highly doped the base is lightly doped and collector is moderately doped what is going to happen to the depletion region in this npn transistor so basically suppose this is the first emitter and base junction so the junction between emitter and base is known as emitter base junction the junction between collector and base is known as collector base junction so this is emitter base junction so this is emitter this is base and this is collector <coughs> since they have different sizes what will happen to the depletion region width as we have seen in the pn junction when we discuss about pn junction if doping is large depletion width is smaller so basically there will be a very small amount of depletion region going inside emitter and if doping concentration is low depletion region is large 
we discussed that particularly so there will be a large amount of depletion region going inside a base material right similarly in case of collector and base junction since it is moderately doped the width will be a little bit larger as compared to emitter but over here also the depletion region width will be larger so this is my depletion region collector base depletion region and this is emitter base depletion region and now look at this particular side over here look at this particular this is the size of base we are talking about right so the width of base is very very small so if somehow if i provide let's suppose this is n type material this is n type material obviously this has to be p type material and if i forward bias this emitter and base junction so basically there will be negative terminal connected to n type material and positive terminal connected to p type material so this is forward bias and if the voltage provided to this particular emitter base junction is greater than the new voltage so if it is silicon let's say it is greater than 0.7 volt then the electron will be transferred to this base region and since the voltage is larger what's going to happen it will acquire some kinetic energy and then it can penetrate in this particular region so there will be a, it is very easier because of the lower width is easier for the charge carriers to go from emitter into collector and because of that almost 95% of charge carriers are collected at collector region only 5% get only 5% charge carriers get recombined in base region we'll be discussing about this in more detail plus but this is just to mention that there is a difference in depletion region width in emitter region in base region and in collector region we discussed that while discussing about the effect of doping concentration on depletion region we have, we have I guess we have a separate video for that particular thing. If you haven't seen that particular video, please go and visit that particular video. Now, this is the construction of a transistor. So basically, this is very important. The width of emitter base and collector is different and also the doping concentration of emitter base and collector is different. Hmm? So, if I have an NPN transistor, it will look something like this. This is N, P, N transistor and there will be three terminals. Now while showing in the circuit, I cannot show this something like this. So I need to choose some symbol for that. And the symbol for this transistor is something like this. which is base, which is emitter and which is collector. It is not clear from this particular point. So this particular terminal is my base. But which one out of these is emitter? So in order to distinguish emitter from collector, a arrow is shown. Now the direction of arrow, in which direction the arrow should be shown? Should it be shown toward the base or away from the base? For that, there is a trick. Now, if I have a NPN transistor, in NPN transistor, I have a majority, in N type material, I have electron as majority charge carrier. And when this base emitter junction is forward bias, what is going to happen? So N type is connected to negative terminal and P type is connected to positive terminal. So this is forward by what is going to happen? Electron from N region will enter into base. And when electrons are entering into base, what will be the direction of current? The direction of flow of electron and direction of flow of current is opposite. So the current will be flowing in this particular direction. So 
the current is flowing away from the base and hence in emitter a arrow is shown which indicate that this is a n pin transistor see it is going away from the transistor similarly if i have pnp transistor this is p type material this is n type material and again a p type material and there will be three terminals which one is emitter over here this is emitter base smaller bit and collector larger bit okay the symbol for this will be something like this why why the arrow is shown going toward the base this is base this is emitter and this is collector why the arrow at emitter is shown going toward the base because this is p type material so the majority charge carriers will be holes and when it is forward bias hole will be going from p type material into n type material and the direction of hole and direction of current is same so the current is flowing from emitter toward the base so that's why it is shown going toward the base in n type npn transistor the current is going away from the base from the base to the emitter direction of current is from base toward the emitter and that's why it is shown going toward the emitter from the base so this is the symbol of a transistor so it's very simple what kind of transistor this is this is p and p transistor and this is n p n transistor so a arrow is shown at the emitter region so we have covered what is the construction of this transistor what is the <coughs> symbol of this particular transistor now let's talk about the working of this particular transistor now suppose if i have a npn transistor so this is n this is p and this is n which one is emitter the one which has a moderate size so this is emitter which one is base one with having the smaller size and which is collector one which having the larger size what about the doping concentration which one has the highest doping concentration highest doping concentration kiska hota hai emitter low doping concentration kiska hota hai base and moderate doping concentration collector good now suppose this is emitter terminal this is base terminal and this is collector terminal now suppose if i forward bias both emitter base junction so this is forward bias and if i forward bias both collector base junction as well so what is going to happen so this is collector and type material this is p type what's going to happen now since both terminals are forward bias a electron from n type uh, this emitter will move toward p type material and again this will move toward and uh, uh, again the electron from n type material will move toward the p type material so electron from both emitter as well as collector will move toward the base and there will be a large amount of current flowing through the base so basically what we have over here is that a conductor type behavior so this is acting as if it is behaving as if it is a conductor right that's not very interesting now what will happen if i reverse bias it so let's say i have this n p n transistor 
so i have reverse bias this terminal a meter base junction and i have reverse bias this collector base junction as well now what is going to happen there will be no flow of electron from emitter toward base there will be no flow of electron and similarly there will be no flow of electron from collector toward the base right so there will be no current flowing so there will be no current flowing and what do you what do you call a device which does not conduct current so this will behave as if it is a insulator so it's not very interesting i can create just, just by instead of doing something like this i can have a slab of semiconductor material something like this either n type material or p type material and i can connect it to a battery and there will be a flow of current right so this and this will be similar similarly if i connect a insulator to a battery then there will be no flow of current this is conductor this is insulator there will be no flow of current so this is similar to this but something interesting we can create something interesting by connecting one terminal as a forward bias terminal and another terminal as a reverse bias terminal so let's see what's going to happen so this is emitter base and collector so let's talk about n p n and if i forward bias this emitter base junction this is emitter this is base i need to forward bias one junction and reverse bias the other and since emitter has a large uh, doping concentration so it can provide large number of charge carriers so i am forward biasing this emitter base junction and i am reverse biasing the collector base junction So this is negative terminal. This is positive terminal. This is negative terminal. This is positive terminal. Something like this. Now what is going to happen? Now, since this is forward bias, the electron from n type region will enter into p type region. So I have a majority of electrons inside this region. Uh, so basically, something like this is happening. let me magnify this picture so these there are large numbers of electrons over here and there are very few numbers of holes in p type material and again there are large numbers of electrons over here right and this is connected to negative terminal this is connected to positive terminal and this is connected to a positive terminal something like this now what will happen when such a thing is occurring since this is this junction is forward bias electron will move in p type region but since there are very low numbers of hole present there will be large numbers of electron over here in p type material so this is n p n so because of the forward bias i have created a large numbers of minority charge carriers in p type region and this is reverse bias this base a uh, collector base junction is reverse bias now what's going to happen when this base collector base junction is reverse bias since this collector base junction is reverse bias only minority charge there will be only current because of the minority charge carriers and what are the minority charge carrier in p type material electron so this electron will move inside over here inside this particular conductor right but i can control the amount of electron that is entering the collector region how i can control by controlling this particular voltage over here i can control how much current is flowing through the base region how because 
at this particular point the voltage is the difference between these two voltages for example if this voltage is 5 volt and this voltage is 6 volt this will be let's say at this particular point this is plus 5 volt this is minus 5 volt this is minus 6 volt this is plus 6 volt uh, this is minus this is plus okay what will be the net voltage at this particular point the net voltage at this particular point will be 1 volt and since I have applied a minus 1 volt only over here I can control the flow of electron the, the reverse current will be very very small because I have not provided sufficient energy for these electrons to go into across the depletion region you are getting my point the sufficient electron will not be able to cross this particular junction however if I have something like this this is minus 8 volt this is plus 8 volt at this particular point and over here again minus 6 and plus 6 what will be the voltage at this particular point at this particular point the net voltage will be 2 volt plus 2 volt and since I have plus 2 volts there will be a large amount of current flowing in this particular direction the electrons will be attracted in this direction and also there will be a reverse current so I can control how much current I can flow in this direction by just controlling the voltages right so this is not similar to this particular thing here in this particular case when both terminals are forward bias when both terminals are forward bias in this particular condition I cannot control this flow of current but here I can control when one junction is forward bias and another junction is reverse bias I can control the flow of current and depending on and depending on how much current is flowing through the base region I, I, I can calculate how much current is flowing through the emitter right? and because of that since I can control the operation of this device by controlling the current flowing through the base this is known as current controlled device and as you can see both charge carriers are taking part in this particular conduction process because hole from this will also move in this particular direction this is known as both electron and holes are taking part in conduction process this is known as bipolar junction transistor when this base, uh, collector base junction is reverse bias obviously the hole from a uh, collector region will also be entering into base region that's why it is since the both uh, charge carriers are taking part into conduction of current it is known as bipolar junction device so that is the working of this particular transistor so in order to operate this bipolar junction transistor what we need what we uh, what do we need we need emitter base junction to be forward bias and collector base junction should be reverse bias and what happens when you have emitter base junction forward bias and collector base junction reverse bias the amount of current flowing through base will control amount of current flowing through 
ಕಲೆಕ್ಟ್ ನಾವು ಸಪೋಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಮೈ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಎಮಿಟರ್ ಬೇಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಲೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಫ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಚಾರ್ಜ್ ಕ್ಯಾರಿಯರ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಈಜೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಎಮಿಟರ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಬೇಸ್ ರೀಜನ್ ದೆನ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಫೈವ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಚಾರ್ಜ್ ಕ್ಯಾರಿಯರ್ಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ರಿಕಂಬೈನಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಬೇಸ್ ರೀಜನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ರಿಮೈನಿಂಗ್ ನೈಂಟಿ ಫೈವ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಚಾರ್ಜ್ ಕ್ಯಾರಿಯರ್ಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಈಜೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಕಲೆಕ್ಟರ್ ರೀಜನ್ ಸೊ ಈವನ್ ಬೈ ಪ್ರೊವೈಡಿಂಗ್ ಅ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಅಮೌಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಕರೆಂಟ್ ಟು ದ ಬೇಸ್ ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಎ ಫೈವ್ ಮಿಲಿಯನ್ ಎಂಪಿಯರ್ ಆಫ್ ಕರೆಂಟ್ ಟು ದ ಬೇಸ್ ಐ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟ್ ಅ ಲಾರ್ಜ್ ಅಮೌಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಕರೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ಕಲೆಕ್ಟರ್ ದಟ್ ವುಡ್ ಬಿ ಆಫ್ ದ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಆಫ್ ನೈಂಟಿ ಫೈವ್ ಮಿಲಿಯನ್ ಎಂಪಿಯರ್ ಆಬ್ವಿಯಸ್ಲಿ ದ ಕರೆಂಟ್ ಫ್ಲೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಥ್ರೂ ದ ಎಮಿಟರ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಮಿಲಿಯನ್ ಎಂಪಿಯರ್ you understand so since ele- this is electron moving it toward this particular direction holes moving toward this direction and electron going in this direction that's why the current direction is acting like this see so only 5% of charge carriers recombine in base region that's it for today from the next lecture we will discuss in the next lecture we will discuss about more about this bjt Thank you for your time. See you in the next video.